guys and welcome back to Humble for Christ. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, so today we need to talk about a serious topic. It is the three ways that Israel can affect you negatively. Now, I'll share another video later about the three ways Israel can affect you positively because there are some of those, but the three ways Israel can affect you negatively first, okay? Because I had an encounter today, but I can honestly say I blame myself for what happened because it was all me. Anyway, the first way, rudeness. If you don't watch it, your behavior will become as rude as the people that you are surrounded with. And my window is open, you guys. Sorry for the noise. So, yeah, it's my window. But anyway, if you don't watch it, you can become as rude as the people that you are surrounded with here in Israel. Israel has three negative issues, and it's rudeness, impatient, complaining. Three. So, with the rudeness, it's everywhere. Like, you can't, you know, when you're in line, there's no, courte there's no courtesy. You're in line, you're getting pushed, you're getting shoved. Even if you're standing in a grocery store line, it does not matter. This is a known fact. Even if you're waiting on the bus, there is no line. You shove your way past and you get on the bus. If other people don't get on, oh well. And that's how it make you think, literally. Um, you know, and... That's, you know, a lot of the rudeness just by, um, you know, if you go into a place of business and you're being serviced, the customer service, there is none. They carry their attitude to work with them. <laughs> it's so nice, you know. You know, to go into a store and you're just trying to shop for something, you're excited about a gift, they don't care. They're like, what do you want? Hurry up, pick. There goes the impatience. There is no patience in Israel. Everything they do is impatient. Hurry up, hurry up. You're taking too long. Move faster. What are you doing? You know, get out of the way. You're in the way. You know, there's, it just, it just cuts your patience to the ground. You don't have any patience left if you don't be careful while living here in Israel. You can allow those spirits to touch you every day. And before you know it, you're doing what they're doing. And I can use myself as an example. I'm the prime example because there have been times where, yes, I've been in a line like not too long ago, about a week and a half ago or so. I was in line and this lady, I was in a grocery store line. This lady pushed me aside, you know, and I was already packing my groceries in the bag and getting ready to leave. And she pushed me aside, pushed my bags aside. And then she started trying to pay for her stuff. I said, oh, wow. And then I thought to myself, like, really? And so then she had the nerve to turn to me and say, give me your blue book number. Give me your ID number so I can use your uh, membership for the store. I said, what? I didn't even say nothing to this lady. I looked at her and said, I don't understand. And I walked off. Now, other people would have been like, you know, I know the worldly thinking is she deserved that. Oh, well, she shouldn't have been rude or whatever. But in reality, it's like, no. For me, you guys... It, I felt bad when I got home because I represent Christ Jesus. And as a representative of Jesus Christ, the Lord tell us that regardless of how somebody treats you, always be kind back to them. So the kind thing for me to do would have been to give the the um, cashier my membership number so that she could get her discount. Even though she was rude to me. But that was an opportunity for me to show the love of Christ and I didn't because she made me mad. So I was in my human as <laughs> person. I was my human person at that time. I wasn't even thinking spiritual. I was just I was just all flesh. I was like, forget that. She made me upset. She could deal with it. You know. And then the impatientness in Israel. Let's go to that. The impatientness in Israel comes from the fact that they feel like you owe them. This is how majority of Israelis think. Not every Israeli thinks this way. Not all, just a vast majority of them feel like you owe me so you need to move faster for me you need to open the store for me you know if you tell them like um if if you go to the post office and the post office is not open yet and they say they open at eight o'clock you have israelis knocking on the door like hello why aren't y'all open the lady will be like look at your time it's not time for us to open yet yes it is i gotta go to work open this door like you know you'll be looking at them like 
if it ain't time to open yet, then it ain't time to open yet. You know, like um, even today, this happened to me today. So this is the reason I made the video because I went to this store and it's a store where they allow you to pick up packages, postal packages. So I went to go get my postal package. The lady had my package in her hand, but she didn't want to give it to me. And I said, like, just give me the package. Like, I'm already here. You know, why are you going to make me get on the bus, go home with my kids, then come back with my kids? I don't have to do that. Just give me the package. I'm already here. You know what I'm saying? Like, and she was like, no, I can't give you the package because the postal side of the store is not open yet. So I said, oh, my Lord. I said, are you serious? What? Like, why do you work in the store? You don't know how to run the postal side. But I was wrong because she, like she said, the postal side wasn't open yet. So looking from her perspective no that is not her problem that the postal side is not open for me you know that is not her problem that the postal side is not open for me so you know i had to wait but i was being impatient and i got irritated with her i got mad at her and i was like why don't you just give me my stuff you have it take a photo id or something and show them that i took my package you got my number you got my id what's the problem like do that and then i can go no she didn't want to do that so and I was like, yeah. So it was it was uh, something that I had to think about. It was something that I had to be like, oh, wow. I literally paused and looked at myself like, Charity, what are you doing? It is not her problem that you got there 30 minutes before the store opened, before the postal side of the store opened. And the side opened at 430, but I got there at 358. So I was like, dang. And I didn't know no, the time that the store opened. So I just felt like, just give it to me. So now I comprehend where they spirit of impatience has come from. It just come from them feeling entitled, like you put there to serve me, so do it and do it right. Like literally, you know, it's like a slave, slave owner mentality, not a slave mentality. Because if, uh, you know, if you looking at somebody like, you know, that's your job and you need to do it right now and deal with it, you know. The fact is, yes, that's, that's, that's the person's job, but that was not her specific role. So whoever was there that runs the postal side wasn't there yet until 4.30. And, you know, after a while, I calmed down. I thought about it, and I was like, Lord Jesus, help me. I'm acting like the people I'm surrounded with. I'm like, this is not a, okay, you know. So I said, when I go back, I'm going to apologize to the lady because, you know, I got frustrated with her. She wasn't doing nothing. Literally, she was just doing her job. So now when I say she doing her job, I mean it in a respectful way, not do your job like in a, in a slave owner type way. Because there's two types of do your job. There's like, just do your job. You know, like you degrading that person versus, you know, she just she just doing her job, man. You know, that's what she got to do. That's respect, you know. So, yeah. And then we come to the last one. Complaints. Complaining is a big issue here in Israel. It's such a big issue that it starts from the babies to the adults. I'm just saying, it's everybody. You know, people say, well, no, it's not. It, it's everybody. When you come and visit, you don't, you know, you don't get to taste it that intensely. You have to literally live here to taste it every day and to understand what it means to be around constant complaining. When I first met my husband, that was something that we had a problem with in the beginning of our marriage. Because I wasn't the person to complain about nothing. You know, I'd be like, I would fix the problem. I didn't complain about it. I would think to myself, if I could fix it, then my complaint is valid. If something is going to change from me complaining about it and it'll be fixed, fine. But if I complain about it just to be complaining about it, that's stupid. I'm not about to do that. If I have a complaint, then it needs to be for a valid reason. You know, like if I'm complaining about not fully understanding why my process got slowed down as far as my citizenship go then yeah i'm gonna ask questions about that i'm gonna have complaints because i want to know why did you move it back what did you stop it for you know those are valid complaints but an invalid complaint is like well why does she have to move to that side of the store she didn't have scoot over there i'm standing over here that's not valid y'all that's just complaining and you just don't like what that person just did that's it they didn't physically do nothing to you they didn't physically say nothing to you you just bothered at how they're acting and you don't even know them. That's complaining. Whatever they're doing, whatever they're going through, that is not your business. Unless it's your family member or your loved one and you can actually help. Here in Israel, they don't get that. So if they see you do something dumb, they'll complain for you. You ain't even got, you know, they won't, you, you can't say you made a mistake, you know. 
they'd be like, no, it's not a mistake. No, you're just stupid. Are you just this? Are you just a kuspan or kuspanit, you know, an idiot or, you know, frustrating, you know, stuff like that. As, so it's, it's, um, it's something that I've seen. That's the spirit that I've seen kind of attack my daughters, and I don't like it. I don't like the amount of the amount that they complain it's really irritating because here like you can ask them to do something you know and it's all the kids even the adults like you can say you know well uh hey do you like okay for example if i have a friend and i'm giving away a bed and i ask the you know i tell the friend you know i'm giving away a bed i'm a i'm gonna bring it to you now in america that's normally what we do like if if somebody getting something from us then we bring it to them if we can. If we can't, then we figure out a way to help them get it, you know, but to them, you know. But here it's not like that. If if uh, I call a friend and I say, hey, do you have, you say you got a bed I can have, can you help me get it? They'll be like, for what? What I got to help you get it for? I told you I have it. You have to figure that out by yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's not my problem. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like. Why are you doing all that complaining? That's that's a lot of complaining for no reason. Like, it's a yes or no. Can you help me get it or do I have to come get it myself? Yes or no, you know. So it's, yeah, it's definitely something that's irritating. Like, even with the kids, like, you ask, if you ask the kids to do something here, like, you know, it's normal. Clean your room. 50 million complaints. Oh, gosh, you know. That's normal, though. With the kids, it's normal. But to see adults do it, it's like... Are you kidding me, you guys? Come on. When the post office say, okay, in two more minutes, we'll be open. Oh, wow, well, we got to wait two more minutes. What is the two more minutes going to matter? Just open the door. Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm like, can y'all stop complaining? Just got to wait the two more minutes. Is it going to help your life complaining about the two extra minutes? What good is that going to do you? Nothing. So, you know, it's like, don't complain. So, anyway. Those are the three things that get on my nerves about Israel. Those are the three negative things that can influence you in Israel because it's thick. It's heavy here. And it surrounds you like a tiger or a lion. It's real, you know. So anyway, you guys, that's why, you know, I, I am hard on myself when it comes to certain things. Especially those three things because I know that that's the environment I'm in. But I don't want that environment to swallow me whole. You know, I'd rather be an honest person. Yeah, some people feel like honesty is rude. Well, I mean, I can't help that. But, you know, I'd rather be an honest person. And I'd rather be a kind person. And I'd rather be a respectful person, you know. And one that doesn't complain so much. Sorry, I have bad allergies, you guys. Anyway, so, yeah, but those are some of the things that I've... Those are three of the things that I've had to deal with here and three of the things that have affected my attitude tremendously. And every day I fight to, I fight against it, but I'm not going to lie. It's like as soon as I step on the street out here and go to a grocery store and somebody's rude to me, I'm rude back. And I don't like that. I don't like it at all because I want to represent Christ Jesus in all that I do. And I really mean that I do. And you know, but I understand, yeah, we are human. We're still in our bodies that we're in, you know. But I want to walk by the Spirit. And it's like, man, it's hard. It's hard, you know. And I realize how hard it is just from living here. And I'm like, I think God allowed me to be here by myself just to realize, look, you think you're strong? You ain't strong yet. You're going to get strong, though. Like, it's making me stronger. It's helping me to realize my mistakes, to see my mistakes. It's helping me to pause and say, you know what, I can't act like that. You know, I got to stop doing that. I need to change that, you know. So I do feel convicted when I when I when I allow rudeness or complaining or impatientness to take over me or overwhelm me, you know. So just something I wanted to share with you guys. For any of you that haven't been to Israel or maybe you have been to Israel and you have thoughts on how you feel about it and the people in it, you know. Like I said, Israel is a beautiful country, but the people in it, that's a different story. So, you know, but at the same time, it's good people and bad people all over the world. So, you know, I think for me, it's just picking my, picking which cup of coffee I want. Black with no sugar, no cream, or black with sugar and cream. Simple. <laughs> you know, do I want it sweet or do I want it bitter? <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a blessed day. And please comment, like, subscribe, share. Whatever you're going to do. 
do it. I'll be here waiting. See. All right. Stay blessed, you guys. Thank you for watching Humble for Christ.